I studied with Bruce Lee in 1964, and uh, the style or the method, which be, many people call it, is not really a uh, Jeet Kune Do style. It's a concept. And in the concept, Bruce encourages to research many different arts, regardless of its country's origin, whether it's from Japan or China or Okinawa or Korea or, or Thailand or, or various different parts of the Orient, even Western arts. We were encouraged to look into it and find something that worked for us. So Jeet Kune Do, again, is not a style. It is a concept in which you're trying to utilize many different uh, systems and styles and get the essence from it. In 1964, uh, I met Bruce Lee, and these are the things that he stressed. Larry Hartzell was one of his original students, and uh, Larry has been, for the past years, he's been in law enforcement for eight years. He has an AA degree in criminology. Larry Hartzell is a bodyguard for such people as such as Mr. T. And in the recent years, he has developed, becoming a very, very good uh, bodyguard and a security person. Uh, being hired by various different celebrities in the Los Angeles and Hollywood area. Uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, introduce Larry Hartzell. And uh, as I said, he's an original student of Bruce Lee. He's gone his own way. He's uh, developed the Dumog portion of, uh, of Kali, the wrestling portion, and he's developed even the uh, Jeet Kune Do, uh, grappling and trappling, and putting it into his own system. Originally, uh, Bruce taught us various different trapping methods. For instance, if the punch was to come and we were to trap it, we would come back here and we would lock up. This would be the lock up positions that we would use. Uh, so this is basically, Larry has taken it this way and he's developed it, researching different grappling styles and he's become sort of like our, our specialist in the Jeet Kune Do, in the grappling phases of the art. So at this time, I'd like to turn over the, the tape and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Thank you. Okay, let's say that I was uh, teaching this person knife fighting, and this drill is foreign to her, and she's never done it. So the first thing I would do is tell her to turn the body like this, with the palm up. Okay, would you turn your body, palm up. Okay, he's covering the center line, and switching to the other side, palm up. Going to the center line, the arm up pops in like this, okay. And then twist again, palm up. Then I'll ask her to take a step, and go like that, and then do a step on the other side, and then palm up, okay. Like that, twist again, palm up. Okay, now I'm going to ask her to put the hand here so that she will understand that when she takes that step to her left and twists out, that will give her room. Even without the aid of that hand, you, if you watch closely here where my knife would be, you see, that gives her that much room. Okay, so the important thing in Kali, before we teach the technique, before we teach the disarm, we teach the reflex because the technique without the reflex is worthless. So this is the very first time she's done this. So let's say that I now thrust it high, okay? It can go here. She has the option of using this hand, or she has the option of using this hand. So at this point now, for the training drill, her right hand is here. At that time, I go to the opposite side. Notice that where she cuts the line over here, this hand is held in reserve in case she misses. Now when I train, see, I'm going to pick this up slowly so that you can see the various different ways. This is the flow drill, okay? And where she has to move, and then she feels me, okay? Okay, and turning the body up and down, and switching left and right. Now, I will touch her if she's not on there. Back. Again, now notice again when you switch here, and the hand is here. This hand is into the eyeball, okay? This hand would come over here at this point. Okay, at that point, notice where the strip would be, and that would be in a locked position, okay? Again, slow motion, if I came to the high line and switched it to the other side, the hand could be here and it could be stripped. However, you can return it to the center both at the low line and at the high line. The return to the center is identical to the knife drill that you had. Notice where she would return it in here, stepping on my toes so I couldn't run away and ejecting it out here. The best thing to do against a knife is to have an equalizer. Throw dirt, pick up a picture frame, run fast. Uh, at least have an aerobic program so that you at least now notice the high line. Okay? The thrust is here, stripped on my body, and you can go into the throw. Okay? These are important to do because when the reaction time comes, before you learn that technique, again, the slow motion. See? Again, look at closely. Okay? Slow motion. Notice where the hit is because they would push the person back. Okay? 
the hand will be delivered in here. At this point, you can thrust it, but you probably go to jail, so put it here and strip it out. That's the important thing, okay? All right. So we start the drill again. We start the thrust. This program in the beginning stages again. Going like this, flipping, turning the body. And for the purpose of training, always thrust it as far as you can thrust it. See? When this thrust comes up here, you're going to try to slash that person so that hand has to come out here. I'm going to try to pull here, and so, please don't move yet. I'll try to slash here because I have the hand here. Now when she turns her body, notice what happens to the, to the circle. So that when you move it again, okay, you come out. So your drill both can be delivered with the left hand and with the right hand always. So you're finding the motion, okay? And you have to learn how to learn how to take out the hand. Notice where the hand would be. Now the strip will be on the top, see? And that would be a lock position, okay? So it's important at this stage to get the reflex before you get the technique. Okay, at this time I'd like to explain how the Filipino art comes about, okay? Everything from ancient times, the weapon is always taught. So if there was a slash position, we learn the dagger first to insert, okay? In slow motion again, one, excuse me, two. Or slow motion again, one, two, okay? When you do an empty hands, you attack either the brachial nerve or the ulnar nerve, okay? So when you hit it, there is a shot into the eyeball, and you have destruct the ulnar nerve, which is your crazy bone or the brachial nerve, and then hit is hit, and usually the first series we teach is the elbow and the knee. Once we accomplish that, we take it to this side, again in slow motion, eye poke, back fist, elbow to the face or elbow to the deltoid, turning around and hit. Okay. Notice that this was for the lead hand. Sometimes when the punch comes from the rear hand, you use it from that side. The same, same position is used, but usually you plant the foot in this manner over here. Okay? Okay, repeat again. For the rear hand, you just move it out. Okay? Sometimes the elbow is used this way. The elbow comes up, the knee, and plant. And you can foot sweep this if you so desire or go into very stepping take takedowns. Okay? And it should be done left and right. Okay? A lot of the techniques they use in the collie is taken from, as I said before, the knife. For an example, if a kick was to be delivered to my head, let's let, let her put the foot up here so you can see it, okay? The knife would actually slash at that time. In slow motion again, slash, okay? When you don't have the use of the knife, the elbow is used and we dig into the uh, calf muscle nerve like this and it is like saluting a person like that, okay? If you put it this way, you will hurt your own elbow, okay? But if you angle it this way, it's here, and it gives a little kind of an elevator effect, okay? All right. Again, a lot of our techniques, as I said before the knife, so if she were to kick here, see, that would be the first one. Notice how I, I hooked the leg across here, and this is struck, this is kick, this is here, and then the knife is shot in, okay? If you have no knife, that is the kick, okay? Notice again, they lift up, destroying the nerve here, or kicking, okay, to the groin, and at the same time to the opposite leg, okay? So the drill would be, if they kick to that side, we lift the knee up, destroy, lift the knee up, destroy, lift the knee up. Very typical, that tip, typifies the Kali system in the Filipino martial arts. That's the first motion that they teach, okay? Now, when the kick is here, it can be delivered with your left knee, which gives you the side kick here, okay? So this motion is here, see? If it's on that side, you can use your reverse knee, which comes here. When your reverse knee is used, see, the side kick is delivered here, okay? This is very important because the destruction is very important, okay? When the side kick is delivered to this section, the knee is delivered again, see, like that, slow motion, or the elbow is used down, sometimes exposing this, giving it so the knee, elbow come down, or the knee can be used up, okay? You can destroy kicking the thigh, but we never passively, when the kick is done, go like that and jump back, all right? Many times we do deliver here, if the kick is here, automatically, because the, really not, the knee is destroyed here. This is very typical of Kali and Penjok Silat in the art. The arts of uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, and of the Philippines, are, they have a lot of common. Silat is practice in southern Thailand. It is practiced in Malaysia, in Singapore, 
and in the Philippines. The Philippines at one time was called Maralikas. Okay? But the name is different. When you call it in the Philippines, they refer to it as Kuntao Silat. They're mixing the art of Kuntao, which is a, probably a Chinese extraction mixed in with the Silat. That's taught in the southern Philippines. So we say Silat. Okay? In Malaysia, it is known as Bursat Silat. And in Indonesia, it is called Penjak Silat. And in, the, and in the Philippines, whatever the tribe is, they could be it as Silat Tao Suk, which means it's a Silat from the Tao Suk tribe, or Silat from Magmindanao, or Silat from Maranao, which these are the tribes in which the Silat comes from. But basically, the Silat is practiced in the southern section of the Philippines and to a certain degree in the central part. Kali is another word for Silat. Askrima is a derivative of Kali, or Arnes is a derivative of Kali by some people's interpretation. Okay? A lot of our empty hands okay, come from the motion of the stick. As I was saying before, your basic hand motion, I'm just going to go slow here, because this is a stick exercise. See? But the sound of the stick, two things are hit. One hit would be the knuckle, and then the head, and the palm. Okay? This is what we call higut, meaning to tie, hubud, meaning to untie, and bubud meaning to blend with your opponent. Okay? And we can go backhand to backhand, and then buba. Okay? This is the, and we can move it very slow. Okay, notice the hand position here where we punch. See? Okay. This is very necessary now to show you where the position would be. I usually done at high speed, but for the purpose of this film, we're going slow so that you can understand. See? At this point, all the tools are being used. The two when to use the knee, the left knee, okay? When to use the various different kicks. See, that's one kick, that's the second kick. When to use sometimes the use of three kicks, okay? okay? This is the basic colic drill, okay? When to use the position of when that elbow can hit the crazy bone, okay? And use it of the left elbow, okay? And the use of the right shoulder and the use of the left shoulder. These are all different lines in which we practice. It also teaches us when we find the different lines of attack or disarming. Okay? So basically, this is what we refer to as the Filipino system of self-defense because we use the tapi, tapi. Okay, in slow motion again, when you backhand, you tap, they tap out. Tap, tap out. This is the exercise which we call tapi, tapi or tapi or as the American Filipinos say, tap. In reality, we wouldn't do this this long, but this is to exercise your trapping hand, okay? Notice that when she hits with the puño, okay, she can trap on the inside of the hand, she can trap on the outside of the hand, okay? So it is when she holds the dagger, exercise in slow motion again, tapping exercise would be like that, inside or outside, the trap would be. Okay, but in reality, she would trap and stick. Okay, over here, she might come up here and grab and hit. Okay, so that when you practice all the way down the line, this could be a hammer fist, which is held this way. This could be a knife hand, which is held this way. It could be a half fist. It could be a finger jab. It could be some type of claw weapon or some type of weapon. So the exercise would still continue. Okay, that's the trap. Okay. Again, I'll re go back to here. So there are three speeds in the training of the hands. In college, okay. Notice now I am going to lose one of the weapons. Okay. She will strip on this weapon okay, out, and we will continue the flow. Okay. Now, notice how narrow. In the beginning, we might not be this narrow. See? Okay, we're going to back up just a little bit over here like this. Okay. Okay. And we go high, and we use the backhand just like you had the same backhand again. See? Then we come over here using the fist, the training. Notice that over here we could destroy the fist at that time. This is a very favorite one of a lot of calling men. See why the destruction of the fist comes from the movement of the dagger. So if they were to punch, notice how my this takes the place of the hand. So now the elbow does the same work as that dagger. So all the motion are from the movement of the dagger. Okay, now, it can be done very, very slow. See, this is one of the cases.
When I look in systems, and this is part of the Jeet Kune Do concept, this looks like Tai Chi, but it's not Tai Chi. See? In actuality, see, you're not going to spend this long. See? You would move in to different variables. See, this is one of the tactics that you might use okay, to get into so that you sweep the foot. Okay? In reality, when they punch, it would be one motion and that you would be in. Okay? But in the training flow, you do this. I look for similarities because there's similarities in every system. For an example, if you were to punch and I do a pak sao, as they call Wing Chun, and I do a lop sao and gua choy, and I trap and hit. Very common technique that I learned from Bruce Lee. Okay? Okay? But you would think that's only in one particular system. But if you notice closely, a system from Kali derives in the same principle. See? Notice that you trap the hand, you come back here and hit. Okay? Let's take another similarity, because it's very, very important. Very important to realize principles and concepts, because every style has it. And so what we have done in the Jeet Kune Do process, and remember again that Jeet Kune Do is not a product, it is a process. And the concept is to absorb what is useful. So we have borrowed a lot from the Filipino martial art because it's not a system, because what we want to do is improve ourselves. Okay, let's take a very common one. You trap the first barrier here, and you trap the second barrier, that's two shots. But that also exists stick-wise and an empty hand in Kali. They might do it just a little bit different. Notice the first trap, notice the second trap, notice the elbows here where we can go into the locking uh, of the arm and going into the hit. Okay? So always look for similarities to improve your skill. Okay? For an example, you have a high, a low, excuse me, and then a high. Very common one that we learn to go like that. Notice the hand position over here. So if she tapped low, she goes up high. Okay? She has a rear hand, so she has to trap the rear hand. Okay? Very common technique, low, high, and then trap and hit. Okay? But you can find that thing, if I hand her the knife, which is one of the very basic ones we use in the Kali system, because we learn it from the knife and then go in the empty hands. Notice that the identical technique, if she hit the plunges it low, and then she goes high, it's already here. If her hand comes here, the only other possibility is to put it down here, and the knife will be here. Yet there are two different disciplines, practically, but from different parts of the country. Okay? So that's important to realize in anything that you have different types of arts, but they look for similarities rather than dissimilarities in different arts. Okay? Some systems depend on long range. Okay? Some people depend on close range. Some people depend on... Uh, what we call ground fighting. Some people depend more on grappling. But the main point here is to develop various attributes at that level, okay? Just as there is sticky hands in Wing Chun, okay? This is the concept of Wing Chun, okay? Right from here, you can go in slow motion, so you go into your various strikes. However, you have the same concept in the Kali, which we call Higut Hubad, see? That if I strike here and she strikes there, I'm in. So again, you have the same concept in two different arts. You have the same arts concepts which you might find in Penjok Silat. If she were to punch and I were to make the motion like that and come up, this is a very common principle in Penjok Silat. Okay? All right? There are over 158 different styles. Notice again, this is Penjok Silat, but it looks like it could be from possibly Wing Chun, possibly from Kali. The same principle is being used here. Okay? Look at again, a principle that you might find in Kali. And she, if she blocks, okay, notice it's there, okay. Very interesting to notice that when the Americans first came into the Philippines, most of the boxers fought in what we call John L. Sullivan type. The hand was more like this, okay. There was no slipping, left, right, and back. There was no ducking in his body, it was just straight blasts. Look at the fighters from John L. Sullivan, Okay, two guys like a uh, uh, gentleman Jim Corbett did a hand like that, and when they punch, they watch some of the pictures. They put the hand back like this, just like the karate people. In the Philippines, if you notice the fighters at the same time period, the hand was up. They were slipping left, right, ducking, weaving. Okay, because from knife fighting, the knife has to be held in tight when you strike. So if the knife is held this way, you hook. The same principles are being used, okay? That's very important to realize that different contributions of different people into the martial art. 
So in the Philippines, they already had the hand position here because you cannot put your hand out like that in knife fighting because they'll cut it off. Same, same thing in Siniwali. You would never fight a guy like that and the hand's out. Your hand has to be in for protection so that you can strike. Notice the hand position. If I didn't have the stick, it would still be the hand position this way. Or notice the hand position okay, if your hands are like that. Right? One is ready to strike. So if I drop it, the motion comes from motion. If you look at a lot of Indonesian dances and uh, Malaysian dances and Filipino dances, you will see that the form is in here already with the slipping and bobbing and weaving. See? It is incorporated into dances, although a lot of people don't realize it. Now what we do is we take it out of the classical thing, but I teach the Indonesian with the straight classical also, but for the Jeet Do concept and for the blend, we take it out and employ the technique. Okay, I'm going to have Paula do something in a lot from the, what we call the third juros, okay? If she would face this way toward the camera, and this is what they call a samba or a juros three, okay? And I'll explain this to you, okay? This is traditionally done to the sound of the drum and Indonesian or Filipino or Malaysian music, okay? This one here is an Indonesian form. Should I ask you to do it one more time so the audience can see it again? This is a classic whereas all techniques are taken from that motion. That's a samba. Okay, now notice that the first samba, if I have her face the camera again from this angle over here, and doing the first motion of that particular juros. Notice that motion here. Now, this motion here can mean three things. It is for the right punch, which is delivered right over here. Look at it again. So when she does it with optimally punching, it looks again like that. But that is one of the interpretations, okay? Now the second one is if I throw my left hand, notice how the punch is here, okay? Again, if I shoot here, the shot is here, okay? Again, okay, and I take my hand away, notice it, it is just like the form, okay? The other one is when the hand is on both on the outside, that's the shot, again, a slow motion. From here, she has the option of going into various different types of tactics, right? different types of follow-ups, and so on. But that's what we do. We take it out of the classical content and then do the approach, okay? We do the approach by not modernizing it, but taking it out of the structure, and if they want to later on go back and learn the form where it originally came from, that's what we do, okay? The next thing that was very common in the Philippine, uh, in the Jeet Kune Do concept and in the Philippine martial, we like to train the attributes because the training of the attributes are very important, okay? Now, I'm going to use her to just go through some of the basics, not a whole workout, but I would like you to come back here, okay? We want to train various different tools of the body. So what we do is we incorporate the drill, whether it comes from uh, Muay Thai, whether it comes from Silvat, uh, whether it comes from Filipino Kali, whether it comes from Wing Chun, we take it and we put the drill into hitting drills, okay? For an example, if I'm training uh, this young lady, okay, uh, we first put her either in the left stance or we put her in the right stance. And we, if it's in the right stance, we hold go, go this way, and if it's this way, we go this way. Okay, we start off with a jab. That would be the jab. Okay, that would be the jab. Okay, jab and jab. Okay, after we learn that, then we go into the next basic, and usually the next basic is jab, cross. Jab, cross, jab, cross, jab, cross. Okay, now in between that, after she finishes her, her jab, cross, I might hit her here, I might hit her here, I might hit her here, I may hit her here. Okay. I might throw and then ask her to do that cross. Then the next basic usually we might follow is the use of the elbows. There are many ways to use the elbow. We go jab, elbow, jab, elbow, jab, elbow. Okay, that would be one of the ways we train the elbow. Okay? Then we go in the combination. There could be a jab, cross, and a hook. Okay? A jab, cross, hook, jab, cross, hook. Okay, then we have what we refer to as a jab, cross, and a body hook. Okay, jab, cross, and body hook, and a jab, cross, and body hook. Okay, then we have the next drill is a jab, cross, and uppercut. See, jab, cross, and uppercut, jab, cross, and uppercut. Okay. For the purpose right now, because we're not really training for the purpose of the tape, we're just taking our time. Okay, then she has to learn a little defense. Okay, the first one we teach our beginners is when I jab this position, or if I cross the position, she's going to shoulder roll. That means she gets away from this. 
Now, in reality, it's good when you shoulder roll, you should use a side kick with it, okay? But for training the hands simply, we shoulder roll and then we cross, both cross. Look at it again, slow motion. Shoulder roll, cross, both cross, okay? Then we can put it in any object. I might throw the jab, she might shoulder roll, she might low cross, uppercut, low cross, okay? Again, slow motion, shoulder roll, cross, both cross. Okay, at this time, we want to learn evasive motion. So we go and what we refer to as the Bob Ruiz. Common to Filipino boxing, common to uh, Western boxing. So if I throw my first jab and she catches it, okay, and I throw the cross, she bobs over here at 1 o'clock and weaves out to 11. Slow motion again, that becomes your hook. Cross, hook. Again, we'll do it three times for the purpose of the tape, okay? Again, bob and weave, cross, cross. At the time, if I'm training her, I would correct her in different body positions. And, but not correct her too much as that she might lose the flow and correct her, let it go, okay? All right, now, if I jab over here, I'm gonna hook. So she does the bob and weave in the opposite position. These are not the only targets we use, but, but right now, bob and weave, okay? Cross, cross, okay, in slow motion again. Jab, she bob and weave, cross, cross. Sometimes she's unable to bob and weave, so she catches with the front hand and she covers, okay? So in other words, I jab, okay? And then I hook, she catches it here, and she hooks, cross, hook. Okay, in slow motion again. I jab, and she covers. Notice how she's covered? Okay, hook, cross, hook. Okay, a lot of times when I throw the cross, she is going to be countering inside. She has three options. She can do the shoulder stop. Okay, see how it pulls me off balance? She can do a bicep stop, which is here. She can do a straight arm deflection, okay? which is over here, okay? She can actually hit the face, but we don't do this for the drill, okay? All right, so when she does a shoulder stop, let's say, I set my target, one, two, three. Does it always have to be that? No, you can set your target, in slow motion again. I put my foot glove, she might elbow, elbow, elbow. Look at it again in slow motion, okay? She covers the stop, she puts it over here, elbow, elbow, elbow. Okay, now. Those are the ways we train it, okay? Because there's many, many drills, and you can almost take a tape, maybe three tapes, on just how you use your, your basic tools, okay? A lot of times, if I'm jabbing, I'll show you why we do this. If I jab, and if she parries my cross, the elbow would be here. The knee would then follow here once and twice. This we like to do because they do this a lot in Muay Thai, okay? So again, in slow motion, one, two, parry, elbow, one, two, okay? Now, because your right hand cannot get back, if she were to elbow here, my face would be exposed, okay? Right, and then we go one, two, okay? At this point over here, all right, so that she practices the elbow first, I, she will treat my jab as a cross. She would catch parry, elbow, double knee, one, two. Look at it again in slow motion again, okay? So you catch, parry, elbow, one, two, okay? Now, this point is very important, okay? When you strike over here, you want to have the body inclined back at a 45 degree angle. This is something we love in, in Muay Thai, and a lot of the people in, at the academy uh, of the process, we do what we call the knee. Notice if you lean back forward, and the knee is here. Now, I'm gonna take her hands down here so you can see why, see? Okay, so that when I punch and her hands are down, I'm going to run right into it, okay? In Thailand, the most dangerous weapon is the knee. If there are deaths in Thailand, and unfortunately there are, 70% will be done with the knee. Other uh, 30% will probably be done with elbow and with the feet. But the knee is considered. Now notice where their hand goes. One, two, the knee is here. This one's going to snap with the elbow when it lands one, and that elbow will come over here. One and two, okay, in slow motion again, okay? Notice the knee pump action, one, two, okay? Or it could be followed by two elbows after the knee, okay? One, two, okay? Now watch, you should come up with the, with the knee first, okay? Knee over here, then the elbow's planted here, one, two, okay? All right, I'm gonna have to do this in slow motion, okay? So you have the choice from going from elbow to knee. If she punches, okay, and you come over here, your hand comes on the outside. Notice the position over here. The knee is delivered here, the snapping of the elbow is here, and the down elbow is delivered down. Okay, in slow motion again, okay? Now, all these drills, see, see, you would automatically do this into flow. 
Okay. We are taught at our academy, or we'd like to teach our, our people, that if they do the same technique, right, and you start with Muay Thai, and, you, and you're doing Muay Thai, that at any point you can go to Silat. Silat is a very slow little uh, foot sweep over there to, so you understand the possibility, so that you can flow from art to art without even uh, uh, under, knowing when you flow from art to art. Okay, now we work the legs. Okay? The legs we take from various different arts, from the Junpong kickboxing, from Sabat, and from the Muay Thai. In Muay Thai, they go through, but right now we're not going to be working on Muay Thai. We'll work a little bit more on things like Sabat. Okay, we position the hand position. In other words, if she wanted to kick, and, and Sabat kicks with the toe of the shoe to the kidney, okay? Right there in the kidney, it would be here to the kidney. And they use the toe of the shoe because the toe does the damage, okay? All right, notice where we, where we put the glove, see? see? That would be, okay, again, slow motion, see? So that she has a target practice here. In Sabat, they will lightly go to the calf bone. So we sometimes put the focus glove, see, using the target again, slow motion again, please. See, one and two. All right? The kick can be to the inside of the leg. One, two. Okay? So when we practice, we put the target up here, we put the target up here, we put the target up here. Okay? The side kick. We put it here, okay. all right? Again, side kick at very different levels and very different levels, okay? Any kick can be used with the focus glove. You can use the straight kick, okay, this way, okay? All right, using the instep, okay? Again, slow again, okay? You can use the ball of the foot down, okay? And you can use the toe of the shoe if the toe of the shoe is good. At all the time, your trainer will be hitting you, hitting you, hitting you, possibly even kicking you, okay, and then setting the target, okay? This is the base. We use any discipline over here and set the target. Then going in the hand range, firing the target. Then going out to kicking range and back. So that you learn to use your close quarter tools, such as your elbow and your knees, and you learn to use your long range weapon, like your feet, okay? This is basically how we train, okay? Anytime we train, sometimes we train with the gloves on, okay? Uh, not, uh, I like to take all my people into kickboxing, whether it's in the Savat way or the, or the Muay Thai way or in the Jun Fan way, because uh, each uh, has its, uh, I believe, its merit. And uh, yeah, a good kickboxing method would be Bondo, which is taught in the United States. Okay? Now, you notice that I was using focus at that time, but you see, in Savat, they have an unusual way of training. See, like when they tear the target, you notice where my target is, see? See the target? And the first thing is called assault. That means light touch. Everything she does, light touch. If my, if my glove is not there, she just touches lightly like that. You see what she does? Very lightly. See, just like that, see? Okay, notice that now, the, in Savat, they use the toe, and it goes into the kidney, see? Bang, see? All right, now, when you do that, see, this is the way they train. Notice it's the same concept that the Bruce had with the focus glove, but the only thing the Savat people now use the glove itself, okay? Okay, notice that sometimes she will kick to this side here with her foot, okay? Again, kicking here, kicking here, kicking here, okay? All right, so sometimes she kicks low to my left, okay? I set my target and she kicks high. Notice that Savat moves left and right. Again, you go here once, back, and here twice. Now, I'll ask her to reverse that. She kicks high first here, okay? Steps out to that side and kicks low here, okay? Again, she steps out here one and then two. Right now, the drills are similar to anything. Okay? Let's say the first one we teach, even under Bruce, was and even Kali is the first one. She learns some jab. See? I learned to catch. Okay? I learned to catch. Okay? I learned to catch. Okay? That's the catch. Now, when the punch comes again, I learn to parry it to the left. See, that's the parry to the to the opposite side, going in this direction over here. Okay. All right. Then we learn to parry from here. See. See the hand? Just the hand, because we're going to fire that hand here, fire that hand here, fire that hand here. Now, when she parries to the front, in the beginning we teach to catch. But when we catch, I learn to catch and fire back. In slow motion, one, two. Slow motion, one, two. Okay? For the person of the camera, we'll turn around in this angle again. So when we jab, you jab, and I catch. Okay? This is a very basic one, even before you start to spar. See, one, two. Now, later on, she throws a jab, she throws a cross. And you come in. Slow motion. One, two. Notice where the hit would be. One, two, and it's in the face. One, 
two in the face, one, two in the face. And the other way now, if you catch this over here, and she throws across, notice where my hand position would be. Okay, slow motion. One, two. For the purpose, I'll hit to the gut. One, two. Purpose, hit the gut again. One, two. This is the way we train. Rather than take it from a set, we do this. Okay? And from here, again, very common one they use in college is they go here. See? Notice that I'm hitting the bicep every time she hits with the cross. One, two. And automatically, if you're using the elbow, your foot would be up. Okay, now, at this point over here, you are educating both hands. Let me show you some, something very different between Western boxing and Fukuna boxing. In Western boxing, the minute they jab, a lot of times, and if they don't bob and weave, and they throw this hook here, they cover like this, okay? Many of you just put the ear here, okay? Now notice the difference. That's the first difference. Notice how we monitor that other hand. Notice that when she hooks, notice where the elbow would have reached. It would have hit the face at that point. That is one of the very basics that they do in Filipino boxing. They monitor this hand, that hit is right here on the bicep here. So you have this one that goes to the bicep. You have this one here, slow it down a little bit. We go to the rib cage, and we have this one over here that goes to the face. We also, at rare occasions, when they jab, and they hook the front hand, go to the bicep here, and I'm covered here, see? And that elbow is here, which gives the elbow here, which gives the elbow over here. So this is some of the things that they do. The last two elbows were from Muay Thai. Muay Thai has something good in the elbow because they always cover the head like this. A uh, colleague puts their, their hand here, which I prefer to use in Muay Thai fashion because the, it covers the head. So if she elbows me here, she's going to cover her head, see? I cover my head, okay? She covers her head, okay? Okay, another useful drill that you have, in, whether in kickboxing or in the street, is your shoulder roll. When you shoulder roll, and she crosses the first one, I'm going to move my cross back, shoulder roll, shoulder roll, shoulder roll, shoulder roll, shoulder Notice my catch is with my rear hand. However, it could be with my front hand, see? Then you learn to time the motion because you might go in and then go out here, strike up and over, and go into various different combinations, okay? All right, so this is basically the way we train them at the gym. To get a combination off, we like to, like, if she throws a one-two, okay, and then she round kicks to my side, okay? So I might train like that, one-two from here, bang. That's savat look. Look closely, the difference between savat. When they shoot this here, the classic position, they hold the hand out here. A lot of people now in savat now are going like this. As Muay Thai, when they throw the one-two, they use the whole shin. The whole body is turned and lifted into this motion. Now let's look at the difference between similarities, which you can go on to. Okay. The basic difference in that same technique, again, comparing the three arts. Okay. In a savat, if you throw the one-two, they keep the distance, and they use the point of the shoe going like that. In Muay Thai, they want to get as close as you can to deliver the shin into the thigh, but they both do pretty good damage when you hit. Okay? Now in Kali, they will do the same thing. And like Penja, once they kick, they stay. Because this is important. Notice to the body, notice the foot. I'm going to do this very slowly, okay? So that you get the basic idea, okay? Okay, uh, let me explain again the, the Jeet Kune Do concept. First of all, Jeet Kune Do is not a style. It is not a product. It is a process in which we use different disciplines, whether it comes from Muay Thai or whether it comes from Zavat Kali. If we have distance and if we have a weapon, we use weaponry, okay? Because that is your greatest advantage, okay? Okay? Now, if you don't have a weapon at different ranges, you can go from art to art. Out here, I could be kicking any system, northern system, southern system, Muay Thai, any position that you want, okay? You can do anything. That's kicking range. So whether you use a Bondo, Burmese boxing, or whether you use Muay Thai, or whether you use Savat, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's say that this person is standing here. At this point, for purposes of illustration, I might use what they call the sachet, okay, that they use in Savat, which is like that, see? When I come in, I can go into Wing Chun. At that point, I might flow into Western boxing, okay? At another point, I might go into a lock similar that you might use in Jiu Jitsu, and for the purpose of camera, I'll take the person down like this and lock the person here, and maybe go into any system that deploys this type of lock, whether it be Jiu Jitsu or Aikido or Kali or Penjak Silat. Now, you notice that we went from system to system without a flow, 
okay? I might stay out here, use any particular kick, break into Wing Chun range, and right from here, use a Muay Thai elbow, all right? And for the purpose of camera, I'm gonna go slow, and come into various lock position over here, okay? This is what we call the Jeet Kune Do blend. It is not a system where we go from discipline to discipline or thought of thought process. And this is very important in the concept of JKD. Okay, thank you.